And that is why Soul Eater Not sucks! What the hell? Stop what you're doing right now. I am you, one year in the future. You're from the future? Why do I look exactly the same? I even have the same shirt. That doesn't matter, okay? I came here to stop the end of the world. You stop the end of the world? How are you gonna do that? I need to tell you, my past self, to review the anime Steins Gate Zero. That will save the world. So you're telling me that me reviewing an anime saves the world? Isn't that a little egotistical? Just review the damn anime. All right, all right, fine. What is up and welcome back to another anime review with the MK Ninja. In 2011, we got one of the most critically acclaimed and popular anime of all time, Steins Gate, which is an adaptation of the visual novel of the same name. And people loved it, including myself. So much so that we had to wait years and years and years before we ended up getting the spin-off, Steins Gate Zero, which is based off the visual novel of the same name, which is an alternative setting of the original anime. Instead of a sequel, it's more along the lines of adding to the original story, but not exactly expanding upon the original ending. More so tying up loose ends and explaining a few things that might not have been explained. Now, of course, when this anime was announced, many people were incredibly excited, including myself, as I was happy to go back to the world of Steins Gate and visit all the characters I know and love. But does this anime live up to the hype? Or does it just fall short? Well, let's get this bitch started and find out. Science Gate Zero takes place in an alternate world line where Okabe gave up on saving Kurasu and went on with his life without resorting to any sort of time travel, as he feels humans should not meddle with the powers of time. Unfortunately, World War III is still very much going to happen. And Okabe ends up getting involved in a project called Amadeus, which, lo and behold, contains the memories of Kurosu and creates an AI that is incredibly realistic and brings back many painful memories. Now, the thing about Steins Gate Zero is it is definitely separate from the original Steins Gate, but you really can't go into it without seeing the original. There's a lot of spoilers for the end of the series, as well as many hints and nods to anyone who's seen the original, or things that only make sense if you've seen the original. So pretty much anything that I talk about here is a spoiler, although I probably should have put that beforehand. But yeah, I do like the idea of like this different setting to where Okabe just kind of gave up. Like at the end of Steins Gate, when he went to go ahead and save Kurosu and failed the first time, this is where he was like, I, I, I don't want to do it again, because originally he was going to, but then Mai already basically slapped him and was like, bitch, no, you're going back, and he went back to save Kurosu and everything was fine. But here, that didn't happen, and he just ended up continuing his life as a pretty sad, kind of depressed Okabe. Um, instead of a mad scientist, he's a sad scientist. <laughs> that was a bad joke, but it's also not my original joke. I don't remember who said it, but it's, maybe it was Gigguk. I don't remember, but the point is, I do kind of like that different characterization of Okabe since we've seen so much of him as, you know, so eccentric. And I also love the idea of bringing in Amadeus, which, you know, basically allows us to see Kurosu again, even though in this series she is dead. I, I love the dynamic that he and Amadeus have, and the story is definitely faster than the original Steins Gate. Like, the original has, like, the first half or first eight episodes are rather slow-paced. They're very interesting, but they're pretty slow, which some people consider a very a big detriment to the anime, but I think it's really interesting. The characters, the writing, the the setting, all of it is very unique and interesting and enjoyable. And even though it's very slow, it's very well done. And here, the anime is a little faster. I would say here it's a little bit of a detriment, as sometimes the plot goes a little too fast and skips through a lot of things to where it could hold like like sit still for a little for a minute but overall i think it's rather effective i would say this is more accessible to anyone who wants like a an anime rather than with science gate because like i said a lot of people don't like how slow it is and this one is not slow and well we all know people don't have the highest uh, the longest attention span so people people who might not have liked the original science gate as much might like zero more 
because of that. And one thing that it also does really well is the characters. I feel like with Okabe especially, we, he's, he's so different. Like, he, he's actually pretty normal for the most part. Um, even to where Mr. Braun is like, hey, you're actually doing pretty normal. You, you, you're not a weirdo. Keep this up and you might actually get to something. You know, because before Mr. Braun did not like Okabe. He was like, you freaking weirdo. But now he accepts him because Okabe is pretty much normal now. He's, he's in college. He's doing extracurricular activities, even doing tennis. That's how far Okabe has fallen from the eccentricity ladder. Um... But behind all that normalness, there's a deep sadness and depression that comes out a lot and makes you really feel for Okabe just about as much as uh, I did for um, him in the original Sansuke. Because he, he goes through so much pain in both the original and in this spinoff. And it really makes you feel for the character. And it's really effective for making him very likable. As Even though he does some unlikable things, or at least um, some like, you know, thick-headed things, it comes from a place that you understand. And some of the characters who were really fun and enjoyable in the original, like Mayuri, aren't here as much. Uh, she's still the Mayuri that we love, and she's a really, really fun character. Uh, but there's a lot more focus on a lot of other characters. Daru gets a lot of attention in this, um, and he's still really fun. I love Daru. He's the, you know, basic kind of, like, otaku nerd who says some stuff that maybe you shouldn't say in public, but he doesn't really care. And Suzuha gets a lot more attention here. Like, she was a more of a side character in the original, but here she's definitely a main character. Uh, she's here throughout the entire series instead of showing up occasionally, and then near the end she's more important, but here she's important through the whole story. And then there's uh, new characters like Heijo. She is really fun. Uh, I will admit it's a little uncomfortable because it's another example of Japan making a lolly esque character and being like, no, they're legal, but unlike the whole, like, oh, she's really a 10,000-year-old dragon, here she's actually, you know, just a short person. I mean, it's, to be fair, it's still a little creepy, but at the same time, it's like, she's, you know, she's in her 20s, so, eh. But she's a really fun character. Uh, I really enjoyed her antics with everyone, and she's kind of like uh, a new good foil for Okabe as... She is not. She she is. She has a different reaction towards a different kind of Okabe, and that definitely it, it, it's not like a substitute for uh him him and Kurisu, but it's like a, another version of that, and it's still really interesting and fun. And then we get to meet uh, Yuki, who is Suzuha's mom in the present, who didn't appear in the original Steinscape, and it turns out she is one of Mayuri's cosplay friends. And she's really sweet, and is also kind of a nod to where Suzuha and uh, Yuki share the same voice actress, which I thought was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> can't remember her name. I know she voices Lucy in Fairy Tale, but I can't remember her name, unfortunately. Uh, but again, the voice acting is fantastic. And uh, we also get returning characters. I, a lot of them don't show up as much. Mr. Braun shows up uh, about just as much as he does in the original. But one of the biggest changes I would say for returning characters would be Moaka, because in the original, she was kind of like a villain-esque character. She, she was the one who killed Mayuri a whole bunch of times. She was working for CERN. Uh, and here, she's actually more of an, uh, a protagonist. She works with the characters, and she has a lot of really cute, funny moments. I, I feel like here, they utilize uh, Moaka a lot better, personally. Because even though the like the quiet trope worked towards what she was doing originally, here it makes her more enjoyable, more fun. And even though Moka was an interesting character in Science Gate, here she's interesting and likable. So I like Moka a lot more here than I did the original. Plus she has that kind of like sexy uh, reporter vibe. And Whew. Th this anime has more characters than Science Gate did. It works a little less to its advantage, as I feel like some of them get lost in the folds and you don't see as much of them. But I would say, for the most part, they are really likable and really enjoyable. And the voice acting is top-notch, really great, just as great as the original Science Gate. Very enjoyable, in both in English. I did not see it in Japanese, but I've heard it in Japanese, and it still sounds great in Japanese, but I'm so partial to the English version. I'm sorry, I am a filthy casual who only watches dubs. Shut up. The other thing that I feel like is a bit of a detriment for the anime is the animation. Even though the original Science Gate didn't really have amazing animation, it definitely had more of a 
supernatural vibe and art style to it, as well as angles and stuff, whereas Zero feels more like a traditional kind of anime. And this is coming from people who, like, disagreed with how the original Science Gate anime was animated, because it it was it it was away from the art style of the visual novel, which was a bit more unique, and Steins Gate went for a bit more traditional. But the way that that anime was animated was a little less traditional, whereas this one is a little more traditional, and I would say it's a bit stiffer. But to be fair, Steins Gate doesn't need to be like eccentric and super well animated. It just needs to have, be animated well enough and give us good characters, give us good writing, and give us a good story. And I feel like Zero did that. Overall, I really enjoyed Steins Gate Zero. It doesn't reach the same heights and emotional peaks as the original anime, but I would, it also answers a lot of questions, like how did Okabe end up recording the message that he sent to the other version of Okabe, or other questions like what happened in, in World War III, do we get to see any visuals of that, where did the characters go, who is Suzuha's mom, a lot of stuff like that that's answered, and I do... Really like seeing that. Even though, technically, this anime doesn't need to exist, as the original Steins Gate wrapped itself up really well. And so I feel like this question, these questions don't really need to be answered explicitly. The audience can kind of guess here and there of what's happening, and especially near the end, as all the questions are mostly wrapped up to a point where you can understand everything. It's still nice to have this anime. I don't love it as much as the original Steins Gate, but overall, I'm going to give Steins Gate zero an 8 out of 10. It is a very enjoyable anime. Again, not as wonderful as Science Gate, but well, few things are. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Also, make sure to check out my supporters, all that great stuff, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.